In this video, I'm going to introduce you to two methods used for hydraulic river modelling, the Muskingum method and the Muskingum Cunge method. Consider a channel such as a river or canal with water flowing along it. The Muskingum method is a lumped routing method for channel flow based on the mass balance equation. Conservation of mass, or continuity, tells us that the rate of change of storage in the reach under consideration is simply the difference between the incoming and outgoing discharge. We approximate the continuity equation by approximating ds by dt by delta s divided by delta t, where delta s is the change in storage and delta t is the time period over which that change in storage has taken place. There are other lumped methods which use the same approximation, such as the pulse method and the coefficient method, which we're not going to look at here, but you might like to look up. The Muskingum method combines the continuity equation with a relationship between the storage, inflow and outflow of the reach, the discharge storage equation. Now we have the continuity equation written in terms of values of the incoming and outgoing discharges at discrete times. So we can discretize the domain of the independent variable time t, and we need to evaluate the discharge only at specific times. Here I'm going to introduce some notation for convenience. Let's denote the storage at time j delta t by sj. Similarly, I'm going to denote the incoming and outgoing discharges of the jth time step by ij and qj respectively. To help visualise what this means, let's look again at our in and outflow distributions. At time step j, we want values for i and q. Normally, we know what the inflow distribution is, thus we know ij, but not qj. We're going to derive a formula that allows us to calculate q at time step j plus 1 from the value of q at time step j and i at time steps j and j plus 1. Thus, provided we have a known initial outgoing discharge, then starting from time 0 we can step forward in time and find all the subsequent values of q. Let's picture how this works before we proceed. Suppose we have values of i at each time step, i.e. we know i1, i2, i3, i4, etc. And that we also know the initial outgoing discharge, q0. We'll use the values of i0, i1 and q0 to find q1. Once we know i and q at time step 1, we can use those values, along with i2, to find q2. We keep repeating this step until we have values of q at every time step. This update procedure will be written as a formula, giving q at time step j plus 1 in terms of qj, ij and ij plus 1. OK, so far this is all very general. The next step, which is specific to the Muskingum method, is to derive a relationship between the storage, inflow and outflow of the reach that will enable us to generate the relationship between i and q at time steps j and j plus 1. The storage in the routing reach is represented by this relationship between discharge and storage. Let's unravel this a bit. If you look at the diagram, the lower part of the channel generates a prism of water which is what we would have if the incoming and outgoing discharges were equal. There's also a wedge above that with the additional fluid due to the difference in discharge, I minus Q. In our equation for the storage, S equals KQ plus KX I minus Q, the first term is the prism storage, where K is a proportionality coefficient, and the second term, Kx times I minus Q is the volume of the wedge storage, where X is a weighting factor, which is a number between 0 and 0 0.5. A rule of thumb is that K is approximately equal to delta T, and the value of 0 0.2 can be used for X 
And there's a reference there which you can look up for more details of where those values came from. Using our discretized domain, we have a time step j, sj equals kqj plus kx times ij minus qj, which can be rearranged in the form kx ij plus k times 1 minus x qj. The storage at time step j plus 1 is thus given by sj plus 1 equals kx ij plus 1 plus k times 1 minus x qj plus 1. Subtracting one from the other gives us an expression for the change in storage. Now, if we go back to the continuity equation, we have delta s over delta t equals i minus q evaluated at time t. If we take the incoming and outgoing discharges between time step j and j plus 1 to be averages of their values at each end of the time step j, we have a discrete version of the continuity equation which looks like this. We also have our expression for change in storage below, which we can substitute for sj plus 1 minus sj, giving us this equation here. This can be rearranged to get qj plus 1 in terms of ij plus 1, ij and qj. We end up with an update equation of the form qj plus 1 is c1 times ij plus 1 plus c2 times ij plus c3 times qj, where c1, c2 and c3 are constants that depend on delta t, k and x. I'm not going to go through the derivation of the constants here, but rather leave that for you to do as an exercise. The Muskingum Kunge method is a variation on the Muskingum method that introduces a way of estimating the routing parameters k and x by relating them to the geometric and hydraulic properties of the reach under consideration. The resulting approximation is based on the diffusive wave approximation to the momentum equation and is well established as a method for modelling flood waves in river reaches. Let's remind ourselves of the governing equations for shallow water flow in one spatial dimension. The San Venant equations consist of two equations covering conservation of mass and momentum. They can be expressed in full in the form shown here. The diffusive wave approximation ignores the inertial force terms i.e. the first two terms in the momentum equation. This approximation is useful because, in many circumstances, the diffusive wave approximation performs better for flood wave problems than both dynamic wave models, which include all the terms in the momentum equation, and kinematic wave models, which ignore the pressure force as well as the inertial force terms. Dynamic wave models often attenuate too much and therefore can fail to capture flood wave behaviour well, while kinematic waves don't attenuate. The diffusive wave can thus provide a happy medium. In 1969, Jean Kunge did some clever maths that gave him a way of relating the routing parameters k and x in the Muskingum method to the geometric and hydraulic properties of the reach under consideration. I'm not going to go into a full derivation here, you can look that up elsewhere, and there's a reference below. But I'm going to focus on the finite difference formulation to give a feel of how this type of scheme is set up, and how the numerical method relates to the governing equations. Let's have a look at the continuity equation in the case where there's no lateral inflow. Assuming that we can define a relationship between q and a, we can apply the chain rule to the dA by dt term and rewrite this in the form dq by dx plus dA by dq times dq by dt equals zero, or equivalently dq by dt plus dq by dA times dq by dx equals zero. This formulation provides the basis for the Musking and Kunge method. Let's consider our solution domain. The independent variables are x and t. 
So we're going to evaluate the discharge over a 2D space-time domain as shown here. We're going to need a grid which covers the domain, and in this case I'm going to choose a rectangular grid with fixed spacing delta x in the spatial dimension and delta t in the time dimension. Let's consider now a point on the grid. This point will have an x-coordinate that's a multiple of delta x, which I'm going to denote i delta x, and a time value that's a multiple of delta t, which I denote j delta t. I'm going to use the notation where a subscript denotes the spatial direction and superscripts the time step, i.e. qij is the discharge evaluated at position xi and time tj, where xi is i delta x and tj is j delta t. The Musking and Kunge method uses values of q along the i th and i plus one th grid line in the spatial dimension and the j th and j plus one th time step. Thus, we will use values of q at these four points. Let's focus in now on our computational cell. For the time derivative, we will use a forward difference approximation. With the four points in our computational cell, we could do this either along spatial step i, giving us this approximation, or spatial step i plus 1, giving us this approximation. Similarly, for the space derivative, we'll use a forward difference approximation, which we could evaluate at time step j, giving us this approximation, or time step j plus 1, giving us this approximation. We now have all the approximations we need for a numerical scheme which uses values of the discharge at all four corners of our computational cell. In our approximation to the differential equation, we use a weighted average of the finite difference approximations at cell i and i plus 1 for the time derivative, and for the space derivative we take the mean of the approximations at time step j and j plus 1. Note here that C is the celerity of the flood wave, defined as dq by dA evaluated for this cell on the finite difference grid. In practice, the flood wave celerity C is often derived by establishing empirically a power law relationship between Q and A for the river in question, over the form Q equals alpha A to the M, where alpha is a constant, in which case we have dq by dA equals m alpha a to the m minus 1, which is just m q over a. Multiplying our finite difference equation throughout by 2 delta t, we have this expression, where c dashed is a non-dimensional parameter defined as c delta t over delta x, or dq by dA times delta t over delta x. We can now group together like terms, i.e. terms involving qij plus 1, qij, qi plus 1j plus 1, and qi plus 1j, and these are colour coded here. Then rearrange, giving an expression of the form qi plus 1j plus 1, which will be our unknown value, equal to c1qij plus 1 plus c2qij plus c3qi plus 1j where C1, C2 and C3 are defined below. You can see that this is very similar to the equation we saw for the Muskingum method, and you might like to compare the coefficients C1, C2 and C3 with those you derived for the Muskingum method. However, the formulation means that this update equation allows us to evaluate discharge at multiple points along the reach, not just at either end of the reach. Although the equations look almost identical, we have in the Musking and Kunge method a much more accurate distributed model as opposed to a lumped model. Kunge developed equations to estimate c dashed and x from the hydraulic properties of the reach and I again refer you to his 1969 paper for details. The expression he derived for x is a half 
time is 1 minus q over c times s0 times delta x, where q is the discharge per unit width of the channel, and s0 is the slope. For a given initial condition, an inflow hydrograph, such as the one shown here, and six points along the reach, this approximation would produce a solution that looks something like this.